Do you see that picture on the screen? That's a pencil and that's the lead on the tip. That's how much fentanyl it takes to kill somebody. By the way, fentanyl is the leading cause of death to people ages 18 to 45, 50 times stronger than heroin, 100 times stronger than morphine. Over 150 people die on a daily basis from this. And what's most powerful about it is you can potentially die from it by just touching it. There was a story done recently where a lawyer from Cleveland is sitting doing an interview with 60 Minutes and they're saying, why do you have this person with gloves there? He says, because there's potentially the risk of dying if you touch this thing. What's crazy about all of this stuff, it's FDA approved. Patrick, what do you mean by this? Fentanyl is FDA approved. DeSantis, while he's talking and there's a debate going on, tells the story of what happened in Florida. An 18-month-old baby dies in Florida because they had an Airbnb and the kid is crawling on the floor and a report comes after this kid dies that the baby had fentanyl in it, saying the fact that the previous people that stayed at this Airbnb potentially left fentanyl where the kid played with it, put it in their mouth like this died. Fentanyl. The amount of people that are losing people due to fentanyl is increasing on a regular basis. And it's an issue I wanna get into because I wanna learn about it and I think you need to as well. So if you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into it. So what is fentanyl? Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid approved by the FDA for the use of pain relief. Think about that. It's FDA approved. Marijuana has only killed one person in the history of smoking weed. This is when you read the numbers, this is, you'll always find one person, I think she was 39 years old. I don't know what the number is right now, it could be two, but the number I know is only one. And it's not FDA approved. But uh, fentanyl is FDA approved. The origin, it was first developed in 1959 and introduced in the 1960s as a intravenous anesthetic. It is legally manufactured and distributed in the US according to DEA.gov. Fentanyl produces effects such as euphoria, pain relief, relaxation, sedation, confusion, drowsiness, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, urinary retention, and pupillary constriction. Some of you are probably watching this saying, there's no way this thing is FDA approved. Let me go Google it. You did that, you're back. Okay, did you see it says FDA approved? Crazy, right? So why is it FDA approved? Proved, and how do they view this, right? How does the FDA compare fentanyl to other drugs? The medical advantage of fentanyl is that it goes into effect much more quickly than morphine and wears off much more quickly. For that same reason, it's much more addictive than heroin. Typically, the high of heroin will last an entire day after shooting up, but fentanyl wears off within a few hours, which means you need more of it when it's gone. Fentanyl is cheaper to produce, dose for dose, than heroin, wholesaling it at approximately one-tenth of heroin's price by weight. Given that fentanyl is approximately 50 times stronger than heroin, an equivalent dose would therefore be 1300 or 1400 of the wholesale price of heroin. And you know who said this? NIH.gov. That's fentanyl for you. So how do drugs in U.S. get classified? You know these different schedules we keep hearing about, Schedule 1, 2, 3, 4. A Schedule 1 drug is a drug with no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. They are the most dangerous drugs of all drugs scheduled with potentially severe psychological or physical dependence. Here's what's on that list. Heroin, LSD, marijuana, cannabis, ecstasy, methoquilone, and peyote. Now notice what's not in there, and that's fentanyl. By the way, later on, we're gonna look at the data out of 100,000 people, what percentage die when they use it. Wait till you see the numbers of how heroin compares to fentanyl. But let me continue. Schedule two, drugs with a high potential for abuse would use potentially leading to severe psychological or physical dependence. These drugs are also considered dangerous. Here we go. Number one, Vicodin, then cocaine, then methamphetamine, then methadone, hydromorphone, meperidine, then you got oxycontin, then you have fentanyl, then you have dexedrine, Adderall, Ritalin. Fentanyl is in the same category as Ritalin, Adderall, and all these other drugs, but it's killing 150 people a day, and marijuana is Schedule 1, and it's only killed one ever, somebody that was 39 years old, and they don't even know if that's exactly due to marijuana, but that's the story everybody talks about, huh? You know what's one of the craziest numbers that came out on what COVID did to everybody, this whole loneliness uh, epidemic that took place where people don't have friends and peers around them, and they don't have somebody to talk to, and maybe you're watching the same, I'd love to talk to a therapist, but I don't want to go to a doctor, because anybody goes to see a therapist, they're, they're concerned, weird, and I don't want to be part of the weird community. I want to go talk to somebody. If you're someone that wants to, in a discreet way, talk to a therapist, 
without anybody knowing, BetterHelp may be the perfect company for you because you get to do this on your phone. Video, if you just want to do audio, you could. And if you don't like the therapist and it doesn't work out for you, they will simply replace it with somebody else at no cost. That's why BetterHelp is the sponsor of today's video. BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists they have in their network, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise than may be available in your area. And to get started, all you need to do is fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs. Then you'll get matched with your therapist, in most cases within 48 hours. So look, God knows how many times we waste our hours doing things that are just not productive, sometimes just watching Instagram. Go get one of the therapists, talk to them, see how it works out for you. And if it does, continue. If it doesn't, at least you tested it out for yourself. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. Go to our sponsor, betterhelp.com forward slash valuetainment for 10% off your first month of therapy with BetterHelp and get matched with a therapist who will listen and help. The link will be below. Schedule 3 is a drug with a moderate to low potential for physical and psychological dependence. Schedule 3 drugs abuse potential is in less than Schedule 1 and Schedule 2 drugs, but more than 4. So here we go. Testosterone, steroids, anabolic steroids, ketamine, and then you have Tylenol and codeine, Schedule 3. Schedule 4, lowest level, Xanax, Soma, Darwin, Darvacet, Valium, Ativan, Talwin, Ambien, Tramadol, those are some of the names on Schedule 4. And by the way, if I butcher the name, I'm not a doctor. I'm just giving you some of these drugs that are on this list. So now when we go a little bit closer and study this, recreational drug toxicity. Look at this chart here. At the top, fentanyl, 25%. Then heroin, then GHB. Then you have all of these other things, alcohol, cocaine, MDA, codeine, you know, goes all the way down to DMT, LSD. Look what's all the way at the bottom. Marijuana, yet marijuana is a Schedule 1 and fentanyl is a Schedule 2. Whoever comes up with this list, they're probably not following what's going on. Or there's other reasons for keeping marijuana as one and fentanyl as two. I don't know. Maybe I'm just speculating. Let's continue. So then the question becomes, so drug dealers want to keep making money. Why would they make a drug like this that kills their customers? Isn't that dumb? Don't drug dealers want their clients to live? That's a valid question. So if fentanyl is so deadly, why do drug dealers use it to lace illicit drugs? According to Nabarun Dasgupta, PhD, epidemiologist at the University of Carolina at Chapel Hill studying opioids, done correctly, lacing illicit drugs with fentanyl often creates a return stream of customers because fentanyl is considered highly addictive. This is why fentanyl is often found in drugs like cocaine, counterfeit Xanax, counterfeit Adderall, or other drugs not classified as opioids. Fentanyl is good for business if you layer addiction into it. Interesting. So if, if in your life, nobody's died from fentanyl, it's probably not something that consumes your mind a lot. You don't think about it. Like, why would I even be thinking about fentanyl? No one around me has died. It's probably just a propaganda. Look at this data here. Overdoses from fentanyl. When you look at this, from 2018 to 2021, look at the average. In 2018, it was only 11% of drug poisoning deaths. But if you go to 2021, it's at what? 44%. God knows where this thing's at today in 2023. We probably won't get those numbers till second quarter of 2024. But I would assume it's more than 44% today. This next data is very scary. How much fentanyl do we have in the U.S.? You ready? The, the, the government, DEA, announced a seizure. They seized over 379 million doses of fentanyl in 2022. You know what that is? That's enough to kill the entire country. That's what they have today, by the way. Of fentanyl. So now the next question is, so where does all this stuff come from? Who's selling it to us? Who's producing it? Who's making it and why? Domestic black market and fentanyl comes from theft, fraudulent prescriptions, and distributions by patients, physicians, nurses, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, and pharmacists. It's estimated China is responsible for over 90% of illicit fentanyl found in the U.S. The majority of fentanyl is mass produced in Mexico using chemicals from China before being pressed into pills or mixed with other counterfeit pills made to look like Xanax, Adderall, or oxycodone. And if you look at this chart, right here. This will tell you where it's coming from. Look at China to the left. Look how many of it you see the blue. It's going from China to blue where? Canada. It's going from China to US, China to Mexico. And then if you look at from Mexico, going back to India, it's circulating. You can kind of see what's going on and where it's being produced and what states it's going to the most. But China's a party involved in this. US is a party involved in this because we're receiving it. Then you got a little bit of India. You got some Mexico going on as well. You got to hear this one here. In China, companies making precursor fentanyl chemicals are subsidized by the government and receive tax breaks. What? Tax breaks? Tax breaks. According to who? Investigative journalist and author Ben Westhoff. So how is this impact in America? This is the impact. 42% of counterfeit pills tested for fentanyl contain at least two milligrams of fentanyl. If you're not in the fentanyl business, you don't even know what two milligrams means. I don't know what two milligrams means, but check this out. If you look at this here, the harm reduction, Ohio.org, you know what two milligrams is? It's 2,000 micrograms. What is two milligrams all the way at the bottom? Death. You can die from these 42% counterfeit pills that they're testing for fentanyl that contains two milligrams of fentanyl. It's freaking insane if you think 
think about it. So while we're going through this, we have to also be thinking about when is the spike? Like when did it all of a sudden take off? Has this always been around you? Maybe you're like, I remember partying 20 years ago. I never knew about this kind of stuff. Maybe even 10 years ago. What does it look like, Pat? Here's fentanyl uh, uh, data on the amount of people uh, dying, overdosing on it from 1999 to 2022. Look at the chart. It's pretty flat from 99 to when? 2013. Then slight increase in 2014, 15, 16. Then from 16, climbs all the way up to 2022. And now it is responsible for nearly 70% of all drug overdoses, death in 2022. And by the way, as a parent, if you're wondering like who this impacts the most, it's 70% there. But fentanyl responsible for 80% of overdoses, deaths under 24 years old. So if you got somebody that's, you got kids, nephews, cousins, peers, this is really targeting the youth of America. I remember earlier when I was talking about heroin versus, you know, fentanyl, you're like, well, how many people die per 100,000 youths versus fentanyl of heroin? Here's from Statista. This is from CDC. When you look at the colors, baby blue is heroin. The yellow is prescription opioids, but red is synthetic opioids, which is what? Fentanyl. Okay. The blue out of 100,000 Using it, 4.1 die, heroin. Yellow is 4.9, synthetic opioids, fentanyl, 17.8. This is not a small little chart we're thinking about or looking at. This is massive, the impact of fentanyl. And so if you're watching this, you're saying, well, Pat, what do I do about this? If you, if you're, if you don't have kids, you got friends, educate them. Everything's about education. Share this with your peers, with your brother, with your sister. Get everybody watching this. Two, have your kids watch this. My kids are gonna watch this video to learn for themselves because they need to know this is real. And these things are happening when you and I are not around. Think about how bad it is today that even the cartel, Sinaloa cartel from Mexico are noticing their customers dying where they come out and they say the following, the Sinaloa cartel, the leading exporter of fentanyl in the US is prohibiting the production and trafficking of illegal opioids in its territory after coming under increasing pressure from the US law enforcement cartel members say, this is a Wall Street Journal story from little over two weeks ago is what we're talking about. October 16, two weeks ago, the Sinaloa cartel is telling their people, knock it off, stop producing this because it's affecting so many people's lives. And by the way, China, how do we hold them accountable? They're producing 80, 90% of this. And why are they sending it to us? Why are they sending it to Mexico? And Mexico makes it so, who is really the one to be held accountable? Them? I mean, is this also impacting in China as much as it is impacting us? You know, some say TikTok is used as a way to dumbify, if that's even a word, our youth in America. Are they using these drugs to kill? kill our kids in America? I mean, they definitely don't have a good reputation of what they did the last three years with uh, COVID and Wuhan lab and all the lies. What's their motive with this? It's very deceptive. There's a lot of things I'm skeptical about on what's causing with this in China. This is another thing that China's got to be held accountable for because they're producing this and America's unfortunately being the beneficiaries of losing their kids with the drugs coming up to us through mexico the other question is if you're a parent or if you're somebody that lost somebody you're like how come this is not a schedule one we a lot of weird people right now that watch our content some people could be watching this your congressmen and women or governors or mayors or you're involved in politics or presidents why don't you put this in schedule one why don't you categorically put this and make it clear to everybody so we all know why don't you make a phone call and say hey any reason why Fentanyl is not a Schedule One drug. Why is it not and why is marijuana? What are we doing with these categories? How are you processing your decisions when you're doing this? They also need to be held accountable. A statement needs to be made with that. In 2018, one of the things Trump was doing was he was, he was a proposing death penalty if you distribute fentanyl. Could that be something? But no matter what it is, somebody selling fentanyl, the crime for that should be severe. I don't know about death penalty, but it should be severe because practically this much usage of it could potentially kill anybody. When it comes down to China, this could be a revenge thing that China is doing because when you think about China's history, up until 1997, they were part of the British colony. They had like a 150-year contract because back in 1839, I think they had two opium wars because uh, the Brits wanted the tea and this was one of their ways of getting a bunch of people addicted to opium. And, and I think 90 out of 300 million people of China's population was addicted to opium. So maybe this is one way of them getting revenge. Who knows? Maybe I'm speculating a little bit too much, but China needs to be held accountable on what it's doing to America. I think it is something to question. It is something that as a president, whoever's taking a lead next, that conversation needs to be had. And there needs to be a bit of a level of accountability for someone to put on them. So again, whatever you do, you got kids, peers, siblings, make sure everybody watches this video. And if you got value out of it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you like videos like this, we did something about Big Pharma's biggest secret. If you've never watched it, click here to watch it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.